Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hey, wildlings. Have you ever just wanted to get back to nature? Test your ability to survive. Find out what kind of person you really are. Hold on there. Are you sure? Because you can, and we can tell you where and how. There's even a testimony from our last satisfied customer. Tonight's story, Spider Cannibals, by Rinskaro 13. In the early winter of 1998, a group of 30 campers, aged between 15 and 19, disappeared at a camp in Pennsylvania. Several possessions and pieces of equipment were salvaged from the site, including climbing equipment and various items of technology. One of the clues depicting the events leading up to the incident lies in a notebook containing a set of diary entries, uncovered at the foot of a tree stump about a hundred meters from the campsite. The entries span approximately a four-week period dating from November 26th to December 20th. So I've got this new diary for my birthday present last week, and uh, since I've got nothing better to do than write in it, that's what I'll do, I guess. Diaries are so damn hard to maintain. The first two pages are always neat as ever, and then the rest all goes to shit. At least, I know that's what my school books are like. <laughs> Going camping with some friends tomorrow. Um, nothing on my mind, really packing stuff and probably doing some leisure activities to kill time. Hooray! We've arrived at the campsite, and it's raining! The weather sucks and the cold is horrible, but at least they said it might snow <laughs> throughout the weekend. Then we can roll down the hills. Despite all the trouble experienced during our arrival, the hills and mountains of this part of America are actually pretty damn beautiful. We spent the rest of our hours snapping photos of ourselves on the mountains, soaked in the rain and our own sweat. Um, looking forward to tomorrow? The guy organizing the trip says he's got some fun activity planned. I'll bet you five bucks it's a walk. Skipped yesterday's entry. Well, it's not like anyone's forcing me to write or anything. I just feel guilty when I don't. Turned out the fun activity was an orienteering game of some sort. At the end of the day, I just collapsed into my sleeping bag and died. And what did I say about the handwriting? Ha <laughs> ha! I just looked at yesterday's entry and it looked like it had been written by a hobo on drugs. It seems I've given up the neatness obsession already. Trying so hard not to miss a day. I hate leaving blank spaces for the dates. Still, it'd be better to have more than just one sentence in the box. Um, fourth day in the tent, and I'm still alive, but Jack doesn't look like he's having a great time. Uh, vomited twice today. Hasn't eaten since. He stayed in his tent all day today. Hopefully he gets better after a few days. We can't send him home in the middle of the expedition. Wow, look at all the days I've missed. I need a shower. I'm really quite worried for Jack. Um, he seems to be sick in the head now, not just in his stomach. Earlier today I asked him how he was and he responded by saying, I hear shadows. I mean, if you think about it, how exactly can you hear shadows anyway? Yeah, he's uh, really not feeling well. I've gotten into this great habit of writing consistently now. I need to try and keep this up. I told um, the leader guy to make us some hot tomato soup and he brought us Lemonade for dinner. I guess I'm seriously <laughs> uh, worked up when I'm angry because somehow it um, it ended with me punching him in the nose. I got suspended from all group activities for three days. Looking forward to 
sitting in my tent with Jack for a few days whilst everyone else is running about in the hills and enjoying themselves. Yay. Jack is being annoying as fuck. When he's not going on about how ill he is, he's complaining about those tiny noises outside the tent. He thinks there's a serial killer or something out there. To be honest, I kind of wish there were. It would make things so much more interesting. I'm having a generally boring and miserable time in here. I've still got five weeks of this torture left. wonder how Mom and Victoria are doing at home. They're probably watching TV on the couch after having forgotten all about my poor ass. I swear I could hear something creep by just now at around 9 o'clock. Um, the rest of the groups weren't back yet, so I went to take a look, but there was nothing there. Were those the noises Jack was talking about? It's strange, because I don't hear them in the night while I'm sleeping, only just in the evening. It's great that it uh, <laughs> makes it a whole lot less creepy. All right. I'll admit I heard them yesterday evening, too, but I pretended that it was nothing. Jack won't respond to me when I'm trying to talk to him, even after I apologized for calling him a dickhead yesterday. I guess he's just really feeling down. I heard the noises again today. They were more distinct, more pronounced than they were yesterday. I'm planning to report this to the group's captain because I know this isn't just my imagination. Jack heard them too. That's proof, right? I'm absolutely sure that something sinister is going on beyond the wall of the tents, and I'm going to find out what the hell it is. The captain didn't seem convinced. Nevertheless, he put some of the older kids on patrol today. It was a rest day anyway, and we'd all just be staying in the tents. Uh, the noises have gone away. <laughs> Great. I mean, that's perfect timing, right? One of the things that I miss the most so far on this expedition is probably the television. I can't wait to get back home and watch all the new programs. You know, New Year. I'm allowed to join in activities again, but I can't be bothered. I'd rather sit in my tent and talk to Jack about stuff happening at school. But I'm being forced to take part as always. It snowed this evening, much to the delight of the younger members of the group. For some reason, I'm not in the mood for anything today. Didn't even touch a single snowflake. I can hear crunching outside the tent. It's kind of creeping me out. Oh, shit. I hear screaming of some sort in the distance. I was planning to write a long, emotional entry about how tired I am in the mornings, but... I'm just gonna go check. Remaining length of entry unscripted due to illegibility. Oh my god. Help me. I can't. Remaining length of entry unscripted due to illegibility. Great. I've just discovered that I brought my diary along with me in my backpack. I'm hiding. Terrified I could die at any minute right now. What a great way to kill time! <laughs> I thought I saw something in the corner of my eye on Monday. Looking around, I tried to spot what it was while packing my rucksack, and I heard those crunching noises behind me again. Even though I thought it was too early in the morning, I just regained half my consciousness. I unzipped the tent and peered out. Um, there was nothing odd or peculiar in front of me, so I dragged myself outside and turned around to face the direction that the noises were coming from. First, I couldn't quite make out what that patch of blurry red and pink on the floor was, but then as I zoned back into reality, I realized it was a human being. Jack, lying on the floor with his innards flying everywhere. He was shaking violently as blood ran down his neck and down the side of his shirt. At first glance, my mind was 
so startled by the sudden macabre scene that it refused to comprehend what it saw. I just stood where I was in utter silence, frozen in total fear. Worst of all, Jack was completely silent. But I could tell he was in immense pain as he seemed to be gargling and choking and flailing all about, all over the place. And then I noticed that he was trying to move his arms to pull himself away from this thing. My eyes edged away from Jack and turned towards the creature that had seemingly done this to them. It certainly wasn't a pretty sight. To this day, I don't think I've ever been more terrified in my entire life. What I saw in front of me was uh, something of a cross between a human and a spider. That's literally the best I can describe it for now. The thing was about the size of an adult man. Its bones stuck out from its skin, which was raw and pinkish. A map of veins could clearly be seen protruding from its flesh, and it was bald with its skin stretched tightly over its skeletal face. I could swear that its jawbone was twice the size of a normal human's, and when it opened it looked like a hinge on a lever being rotated. Its eyeballs stuck out from its face too, just like two giant spheres, but they were placed on either side of the head like a rabbit's. Worst of all were the grotesque contorted limbs. The first thing I thought of when it crawled was how much it really resembled a spider or a giant insect. Sure, it had four limbs, it was standing on all four of them much like a dog or a cat, but it was very much unlike a dog or cat. They stuck out sideways like an insect. It crawled extremely fast and whenever it did, it was terrifying. About two seconds later, I realized my life was in danger. I saw the creature sniff the air as it turned its head unnaturally, 180 degrees to greet me with its wide grin. Suddenly it began to scuttle toward me at like a hundred miles an hour, writhing and bending in places I never thought possible. I snapped out of my petrified state and ran as fast as my legs would allow, screaming and crying as I thought of my own innards being torn apart by the creature's dagger-like teeth as I choked to death on my own blood and pain. I wasn't even bothered to throw my rucksack off my back. All I wanted to do was get away. To be completely honest, I I didn't run because I thought I'd be able to escape it or anything. I ran because I was trying to get away from that horrifying face I'd seen. It was one of the only times in my life that I'd ever really thought that I was going to die. Luckily for me, uh, my climbing skills saved my life that time. I knew I wasn't going to outrun it, so I headed for the forest in search of anything that would help my survival for at least a few more seconds. Grabbing the branches of a tree, I pulled myself up with all my might as the thing crawled closer and I worked my way up step by step. There were tears and snot everywhere leaking down my face as I desperately tried to save myself. Sitting on the branch, I shook as I watched the creature intently, trying to crawl its way up. After a few seconds, I was so relieved and utterly delighted that I almost wanted to laugh. It couldn't climb. I was safe, for now. Watched it snarl and slither back to the camp area. I could feel a sinking feeling in my stomach as I thought about the rest of the campers. With that thing around, they stood so little chance of survival, but... I wasn't getting off that tree until I was completely sure it was gone. That spider cannibal thing returned to the small red patch on the ground and I winced in pain as I watched it tear out Jack's spine and his ribcage, leaving a hollow void in his gouged out chest. And then it proceeded to eat the intestines, the heart, and the lungs and lap up the blood around the area was done, it began to use a thin, bony finger to scrape out the intercostal muscles and fat in between the ribs. It stripped the bone clean 
and savored the fleshy taste. Obviously, these parts of the body, the, the muscles in between the ribs, were its favorites. The thing it was missing was barbecue sauce. Unable to stomach anymore, I turned my head away and convulsed, vomiting all over my own trousers. I'm feeling a little better today, and glad to say I'm getting over the shock. I think I'm able to use my head again. It's been two days since the first attack, and I can't deny that I've heard screaming coming from the camp direction every now and again. I wonder how many of the rest of us are still alive. Actually, it's like I'm the only survivor out here. Recently, I've found I've been crying for no reason, but it's probably because I'm worried about my friends. Either that, or it's the shock because I can almost guarantee that they're dead. I can still see those things everywhere, crawling in the corner of my eyes. They're dragging mangled corpses of my companions' bodies into the woods and devouring them like ice cream. I've never seen a man eat another man before, and I try not to look, but every time my eyes accidentally take in a glance, bile rises up in my throat. My hand hurts like hell, and... Whoa! Look how much I've already written today! Looking back at my older entries, the only thing I ask myself is, why couldn't I write like this all the time? Well, I've got nothing better to do sitting up in a tree. I guess people only realize how precious life and time is when they've got nothing but a few days left to live. How many more days will these packs of biscuits in my rucksack last me? I'm praying to God that I get out alive because I have a family and a home I need to return to. Yeah, I know. The date on the page says it's the 5th of January of the next year, but it's actually just Friday the 19th. Never thought I'd live to see the new year, did ya? I've been tearing out the pages in between to wipe the tears with because I've been having some pretty depressing thoughts lately. Ugh, I'm going insane. I'm talking to a diary for fuck's sake. I mean, who wouldn't when they're stuck up a tree? Cold, hungry, alone. I wonder if my family knows I'm alive. If this carries on, will someone come to rescue me? Our group leader chose a seriously remote campsite right next to the woods, so I doubt it, but I can't lose hope. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Shit. Arrgh! The smell of death is everywhere here. As I get more accustomed to the fear I'm constantly experiencing, I'm starting to wonder about the origins of these creatures and how they found us. Did anyone know they existed until now? Why didn't they simply attack us the first day they saw us? I guess everyone has questions that will never be answered. I'm debating whether I should plan my next move or not. I know waiting probably won't do me any favors, and getting off the tree isn't a good idea either. I'm surrounded by these things everywhere, and I'm fairly certain there's no escape. But if it's me, just me, I might be able to do it. I think I stand a chance of getting out of here alive. Well, eventually, anyway. Thinking of climbing a tree was a genius idea. I'm glad I thought of it, since I'd be dead by now if I hadn't. So, what should I do next? Oh my holy fuck, they're coming for me. I'm so scared. 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 Of around ten of those 
things, each scratching and chewing on the bark of the tree. My tree! It seems they've worked out how to climb. And they're trying to... Oh, fuck. They're weakening the bark on the tree. It looks like they're going to try to collapse it, and I'm going to fall. And die. Please, someone needs to read this. Any human being, anyone, you have to find this. These cannibalistic creatures won't just disappear. They're scuttling all around Pennsylvania's forests. They're eating humans as prey. I have to believe someone will find this in the future. So, here are my last words. I'm going to die alone and in pain. And I'll be another one of those wasted lives. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm sorry, Father. All the effort you spent on me was in vain. I'm just another victim of this terrifying tragedy. I'm sorry, everyone. I have minutes, maybe seconds, to live. I'm really scared. Really. Their hungry mouths are beckoning towards me. Their eyes are glowing with anticipation, ready to tear me apart into shreds. I can just feel their long, jagged fingers ripping my skin, stripping off the flesh between my ribs. Ow! They broke the branch. It's cracking and slipping and breaking in half, and they're getting nearer. I'm about to fall. I... Mysteriously, no obvious human remains were discovered at the scene of the disappearance. There have been many attempts to locate the creatures described in the entries after it was released to the public with all attempts failed. The described creatures were named the spider cannibals, as used in the context of the diary. However, several minuscule spots of dried blood and bodily fluids have been discovered all around the scene, and police are offering a quarter of a million dollars to anyone able to provide trustworthy information or proof in the hunt for the missing bodies at the camp. Interesting, isn't it, the questions that only occur to us to ask after moments of pants-soiling terror? World War I taught soldiers that a foxhole is no place for an atheist. What lessons can moments of horror teach the rest of us? Well, here's hoping that you stick to the safer, admittedly slightly more boring kind of philosophy. But hey, you do you, boo. Stay scary, wildlings. Always remember that documentation and make the most of your nights.